G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and welcome to my next vlog. Check out these kumquats. What I'm going to do is pick these. Well, these trees are probably only nine months old. I've just, well, maybe not even that, maybe six months. So I've got this one, which is fruited quite nicely. The, the kumquats are quite bitter, um, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do with them in a minute. And on the other side of our gate here, I've got this variegated kumquat, which uh, is slightly variegated fruit. But it's a gorgeous looking citrus. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, getting some brandy and I'm not sure if I should add a little bit of sugar but um, I've read that you should add some sugar so maybe some brandy a little bit of sugar and st stack the kumquats into a nice jug or container uh, you know like a fermenting container or something and uh, yeah see if I can make a nice li nice liqueur after about nine months look I'm on the way down to the shed I just want to um, say that I uploaded a, my first vlog um, only a matter of hours ago and I got a really awesome response I haven't I've read a lot of the comments but I haven't uh, replied to anything yet so busy been cleaning out my shed been I need to get this whole property um, back up to a standard I'm happy with uh, it's left a little bit overgrown lately um, so I'll be showing you all this and what I'm going to be doing but um, I have to say you guys are awesome I've got a spring in my step well in a matter of a couple of hours um, you know so thanks a lot for all your support and thanks for all those suggestions you know good and bad um, I, I take everything on board and I will get back to you on a lot of those questions and a lot of those suggestions that you guys gave me and I appreciate everything I appreciate you just commenting no matter what uh, and especially liking my video and all that type of thing. So let's um, let's move on down. You can hear the mower going in the background. Well, that's because I'm running it. We're in winter here, and we we don't mow very often. Probably once a month, maybe. And my mower got a flat battery, so I had to jack it this morning with my truck. And I've been running it for about an hour and a half. I think I still need to run it another hour or so. The grass is too wet. To, um, to mow yet it's not even lunchtime uh, so I've got to run this for a bit longer so I can know that the battery is recharged and so that's why this is really noisy in the background I've got a 42 inch mower here I've made a video about it it's not too bad for a three acre property it does a good job probably all you need Okay, I've turned the mower off and I've put it back in the shed. <laughs> Thank God for that. It was so noisy. How annoying is running a mower for three hours trying to charge up the battery. Mm, I can smell this. This rosemary. Oh, I've got beautiful. You know what? Plant rosemary. If you've got a pathway, plant it either side of your pathway. This pathway leads down to our shed. And every time you walk past, you just smell it just gorgeous and of course close to the house so you can grab it if you're cooking lamb or Italian food lovely so let's go down here I've parked the mower away parked him in here it's a very expensive piece of kit and uh, you can't really do without that trying to mow an acreage like this by hand I've tried it. Nah, it takes it take, would take me about eight or maybe ten hours, probably more, maybe two days. Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do now is uh, see my wife. She works. She's working away at the moment. She won't be back for two weeks. So my my big aim is uh, it's going from my remember my first vlog. Um, I kind of bit down the dumps. I still am, but uh, really, um, 
what I need to do is get as much as work as I can done get done now in the next two weeks or so so that when my wife does come home from a well-earned break from work I can spend just about all that time with her until she gets sick of me that's what my plan is because in the past you know she'd go away and then she'd come back and I'd be still doing all this work around the place and uh, I just feel like I'm just neglecting her and uh, that just can't go on so I need to get faster and better and uh, that's probably her SMSing me now and I need to get faster and better so I'm skipping lunch today but sort of sort of and sort of not I'll show you I'm just gonna have a feed off the fruit trees quick feed of my trusty mandarin so we'll go over here to the orchard Remember I did this video the other day, this pomelo, can't wait for that to get big. That's the biggest citrus you can grow. Apparently they're double the size of a grapefruit, sometimes the size of your head. Walking past our olive trees, and I've got an olive video coming up. Uh, we we um, cured some manzanello olives, they're absolutely gorgeous. Okay, and look at all the mandarins we've got here whole tree full of these mandarins and we've been eating them like crazy and giving them away and yes I know you guys are saying well why don't you sell some of them well we usually do eat them all eat them and juice them and so we do put them to good use um, but I do like giving them away to my neighbors and to friends and to family it's just a, something that I love doing um, not being big on myself or anything I just like giving stuff away because uh, you know, these are grown organically and you don't get a lot of good organic produce in the store. So beautiful and sweet and big. You can peel them almost with one hand, which is what I'm trying to damn well do. Um, this is when I needed to bring my video stand, Mark. Why didn't I do that? So these are an imperial, an imperial mandarin, I believe. They got, pardon me, they got a whole heap, well not a whole heap, um, about four or five seeds, but they're all in the end. They're all in the end bit, so what I do is I just suck the end bit off and then put, spit the seeds out. I mean, other people just put the whole thing in their mouth, but cockatoo. Mm. So, Hear that? It's a cockatoo. Those things, they're beautiful bird, but the buggers eat my tomatoes. I think he's going over. Yep, gone. Alright, I'll just have my lunch. I might have two of these. And uh, then I'm going to get into the garden and start doing some whipper snipping, as we call it in Australia, or edging, or uh, you know, whip recording, or I don't know what you call it in the US, but yeah, I'll do some whipper snipping around the place, uh, and uh, yeah, I'll film that. All right, I've finished my lunch. I might just take one more uh, for later, and I'll go back. To the shed and get my whipper snipper going. Or brush cutter, that's what I was trying to think of before. People call it a brush cutter. Us Aussies usually call it a whipper snipper. It's about 14 degrees here at the moment, but I'm sweating. The sun is really bearing down. Uh, lovely mild day. Now I've got one brush cutter here, so got from my mate. It's a it's a Honda, but it's uh, oh, it's about ten years old. 
and just not working like it used to. It sort of doesn't spin anymore um, nice and hard. It, it gets into a bit of trouble when you get into th thicker sort of grass. It's just not quite cutting it. So what I actually did was I'm gone on eBay and I bought this brawn or brahma. brush cutter it's a beast of a looking thing and uh, it's a two stroke I haven't used it yet it's a cool, I'll just show you that Brahma AG it was only 250 bucks and it comes with all these attachments including a saw and uh, you know these harder type brush cutting implements uh, several different, just like a little doughy um, several different types of attachments and, and things so I've got to put this together I thought it was a really good price the reason why I did get it was um, I want, I, you know, because of the price of course here's the bumper that's probably what I'll start using today um, was because yeah the price and it's got all these attachments but for 250 bucks that's quite a powerful motor um, I just forget now for the life of me what it is but it was a lot more powerful than my Honda and uh, just can't see the displacement on there but I know it's quite a bit more powerful it's about the equivalent to a 1300 or 1400 dollar still um, now will it perform like that that's the interesting thing I'm not sure if it will but you know I'm going to give it a go and the, you know, that's what I do too on my website I, um, I'm doing I've made a review section and I'm reviewing stuff like this and having a go at it uh, seeing what it's like a lot of stuff from eBay and, um, that, and on Amazon as well that you can get in the US or, or UK or Canada and um, so I like to review a lot of this stuff for people um, whether it's good or bad a lot of the products that I buy I have to say are you know, usually pretty good and I'm pretty happy with them uh, so hopefully this one is too we'll still see and, and I'm going to make sure I'll use it for about 12 months before I write a real considered and a proper review on it anyway but anyway I'm going to get into it and set it up today just for the actual um, you know edging part of it I won't be using the saws or anything like that just yet today. Well, I better start assembling it. Yeah, it seems pretty easy to put together. It's just this handle here, just four bolts that going in. There'll be some screws back here or some some nuts, and then then there's the that bracket thing that goes on there, and that's about it. The rest of it's pretty well assembled. I just have to put the bumper on, and it should be pretty cool. Well, I've got that brush cutter assembled. It took a bit longer than I expected, actually, because just these screws here, screwing them in, that they took a took a long time because you had to. It get, kept getting stuck, and you can only just do little bits at a time. So it just was time-consuming, but it wasn't anything hard. Looks pretty good. I mean looks is one thing, performance is another. Well I'll probably get about half an hour or so before I have to go and pick the boys up from school and then once I get them settled do a bit of reading to my young one and uh, because he needs some help with his reading. Once I've got that finished and given some afternoon tea then I can come out and, and do a little bit more whippersnipping but I might get a half an hour in so I'll get as much as I can done. Gee, the neighbour's horse is going nuts. Don't know what's wrong with her. And the little one. I don't know much about horses, but she's really upset with something. I know my neighbour came out before, tried to settle her down. But uh, something's spooking her.
in a really bad mood. She's looking over that way. She's looking past my place. What's over there? Let's go find out. What's up? What's up? Yeah? Something's up? anything. Horses have really good eyesight. And uh, not that I know bugger all about horses, but that neighbour's dog continually barks. Gives you the shizes. Nothing. Yeah. False alarm. I wish I could have had something, uh, a bit of action there. <laughs> well, the first thing I'm going to do is clean up around my apple trees and this little avocado. There's a lot of weeds growing in around them, into that garden bed. So I'm going to knock them down and see if this new whipper snipper does the trick. Got my trusty safety glasses. It was a good fashion statement. Well, she's pretty powerful. In pretty much just a few minutes, I knocked the crap out of a lot of these weeds here. And uh, that horse is still going off a bit. Yeah, it's made mince meat of the weeds. I'm not too sure if I like that, um, the, the head on it. It comes with several different um, whipper snipper heads where you can put the cord in. That is the that one is the bump head. Not sure if I like it that much. It um, ran out pretty quick. Obviously, they didn't have much cord in there, so they saved on that department because it came pre-packed. Unless the cord just isn't coming out properly. Well, I'm back. I've picked the boys up from school, gave them afternoon tea, did the tutoring reading with my youngest. We read a pirate book, and. Now I'm back into my shed. What I've done is I had a gut full of this bumper whipper snipper thing. I'd removed the one from my old whipper snipper, my Honda that I showed you before. I got rid of that years ago because it just drove me crazy. I could never wind it up properly. I could never remember how to do it. It always got stuck. Just it was never the way it was supposed to work. And I've used this for five minutes and I think it'll go in the bin. So thankfully this unit comes with one of these here that you, uh, you attach. You use pre-cut pieces of cord and that's what I had in my old one. 
My old one is actually this one. That I was uh, using. But it doesn't fit. I wish it would fit because I got this from the still shop and it actually is a really good unit. The cord just goes in and then it won't come out and you're off and going. So you just have cord in your pocket and you can just whack it in, it pulls out through there. So easy to refill as on the go, but this doesn't fit this here. So I'm gonna have to use what I got with it, which was this other assembly, which looks like the little Joey, uh, a New Zealand invention, I think it was. Uh, that's sort of a rip off of that, I think. And uh, we'll see how that works. Um, Basically, uh, you have to undo this though, you have to do undo this with an allen key. So you have to have an allen key now, uh, undo that, then you can replace the cord and then tighten it back up. And remember, tighten it back up. Not as good as this old unit. Maybe I can find a way to fit this onto this somehow, but for now, I've only got about half an hour of light to go and this is how quick your day goes on an acreage you know especially when you're a home dad you can see that I feel like I haven't got a lot done you know you, you assemble something you do a bit of whippersnipping you got to stop go pick the kids up you got to do this go to an appointment this and that um, and you're trying to get to all these things that you need to get done um, so what I've got to do now is I might just give it a rest actually and leave that go because I've got to pick some veggies from the garden for dinner tonight. Um, I always like doing that by the way. Uh, I've got to lock the ducks and chickens up um, and uh, get upstairs. Soon it'll be dark, start cooking dinner and uh, yeah, feed the boys, get them to bed. And that's pretty well it. Then I'll spend uh, tonight putting this together, this vlog, and um, yeah, getting it out to you guys. Well, I just remembered that I still have to fill up the feeders. They're just running out, I think, the chickens and the ducks. So when I lock them up, which is now, I'll, uh, I'll fill their feeders up. That's one feeder filled. I've got three feeders. These are these bin feeders that I made. I've got to obviously shut the door now so that none of them get out. But yeah, that's uh, that's one of the bin feeders going well. Uh, that bin there, I just used that for footy training yesterday. That's all. I've got to put it back in the trail pen. Um, but they were kicking the ball in there. I'm a football coach, by the way. Uh, Aussie Rules coach, Australian football, uh, under 10s, and I uh, coach my son's side. And I needed two bins, so I had to steal one from the pen down here because uh, I only had one other spare plastic bin up at the house. So they could kick a ball in, and if they got the ball in, well, they can get a chocolate. But uh, we had half a training session because they had photos on, and I didn't want to get them too sweaty, so I just made up a nice, easy game, a bit of a fun game. Here's my other bin feeder. I've done videos on how to make these. Uh, they work really well for, especially for mixed flock of duck, ducks and birds, ducks and chickens. Holds about eight kilos of feed. Just made out of an old bin. Mm. 
and uh, I'll galvanize lid on top of that. Well that's the uh, chickens fed, so now I'll get back up the hill and pick some veggies for dinner tonight. Alright, I've got my bowl, veggie picking time. Let's go and get some. I'm going to have pork chops tonight, so I don't think I'll make up any cooked veggies. We'll just have a nice salad and whack some good salad veggies. I'll whack a few spinach leaves in tonight's salad and I'll cut them up so that the boys don't notice them that they might be a little bit more bitter than the standard lettuce and here's a butter nice butternut lettuce we'll grab that tonight I'll just cut the bottom off that Could have left that in the ground actually, but I was trying to operate with one hand. Sometimes you can screw them off. Like that in there. And there's some beautiful blue kale here, purple kale. Just have a few of those leaves because they can be a little bit bitter in a you know raw salad. Good in stir fries. But uh, I like the boys to get some purple veggies into them. Um, yep, that'll be pretty cool. Let's have a look and see what tomatoes we've got. There's a few of these sort of bite-sized tomatoes, cherries. We'll grab a few of them. So, working off three. Let's have three each. Drop one. I love growing tomatoes at this time of the year here in the subtropics in southeast Queensland because the fruit fly don't get them. I mean, fruit fly don't normally tack cherry tomatoes anyway, which is a good thing. So you can grow cherry tomatoes even in spring when the fruit fly come back. Now let's get a little bit of purple lettuce again. Right, that'll do. That'll do for dinner tonight. Yep. Okay, well, it's only about 14 degrees and uh, carrying big bag of feed down there, 30 kilograms for the chickens and carrying this camera around and carrying on like a twat. Um, I'm sweating, sweating, walking up that hill and around the veggie garden. Uh, it's quite warm, but anyway, that wraps it up for vlog number two, I think it is. It has to be. I mean, I've done one before. Uh, so uh, let me finish off by saying I got all your comments. Haven't comment. I haven't replied to any of them yet from that first video, that first vlog. Thank you again. It was wonderful. Uh, thanks for the support. Um, thanks for all the suggestions. You guys are great. I mean. The majority of people in the world I've found since I've been online are just are magnificent. It gives me faith in humanity, YouTube does, and also my online stuff, my website. I get plenty of lovely comments on Facebook and my website directly. Um, yeah, I accept criticism as well, so that's fine, and so you should do too. Uh, it makes you a better person to look at everyone's opinion. So thank you very much for all the comments and all the suggestions and I'll take them on board. Don't forget to like the video, share it around, that'll help me and uh, um, thanks for watching. Bye for now.